We pursued a goal of generalizable zero-shot manipulation, where given an unseen object in an unseen scene, we can manipulate the object to reach the desired goal. We do this by training a goal condition policy that can be conditioned for diverse goals in diverse unseen scenarios. A popular paradigm to train such goal condition manipulation policies is by collecting large robot datasets for behavior cloning. Indeed, several prior works have attempted exactly this by collecting hundreds of thousands of robot trajectories. However, such large robot datasets are expensive to collect and they still suffer from lack of diversity due to operational constraints. Our insight is to alleviate this dependency on large robot datasets by decomposing the policy into two stages, namely a human interaction plan prediction model and a robot translation of the predicted human plan. The key advantage of this is that we can learn a human plan prediction model by leveraging large passive datasets of human videos that are easily available on the web. These videos contain humans performing everyday activities in diverse homes, offices, and kitchens. We can easily obtain such videos in the order of hundreds of thousands of clips from YouTube and other curated sources like Ego4D and Epic Kitchens. Now to learn the robot translation model, we only need a very small amount of paired human robot data in the order of a few hundred trajectories, which is very easy to collect through teleoperation. So, given an unseen scene with a goal image, we first obtain a plan of how a human hand would interact with the object in the scene, followed by translation of the plan into robot actions for execution in the physical world. We instantiate a human plan in the form of semantic masks of the hand and the object being interacted with, thereby ignoring unnecessary details in the background. Based on this, we obtain a framework that can perform over 100 tasks zero-shot involving 40 objects and 16 skills. The capabilities include manipulation tasks in tabletop scenarios as well as in different kitchen and, and office scenes. They involve different skills like plunging, swiping, sliding, scooping, articulated object manipulation, etc. that goes beyond the usual pick-and-play skills that are predominant in the robot learning results. Now let's dive deep into our framework for hand object map plan for manipulation, in short, Hopman. The first module is the human interaction plan prediction model, which we instantiate as a diffusion model. This takes in the initial image and the goal image as input, along with noise as intermediate frames. We learn to denoise those intermediate frames into semantic masks of hands and objects in the form of a temporal trajectory. We call this the human plan. We instantiate the robot action translation model as a transformer in the form of a closed loop policy. This model takes as input the goal image, the predicted human plan, and the observations at each time step along with some history. The output of the transformer is a series of actions and we execute the first action and replan. To quantify the performance of our framework, and due to the lack of standardization in generalization nomenclature in the community, we define three broad generalization axes. In mild generalization, we have unseen configurations of scene object instances or minor changes in the scene, like lighting variations, as shown in the GIFs here. For standard generalization, we have either a completely unseen object instance or unseen skill object pairs. For example, we have seen a toaster being plunged in the training data, but we haven't seen other toasters being plunged, which we are generalizing to. In GB, we may have seen the toaster being plunged in the training data, but we haven't seen the skill picking in the context of a toaster, and this is what we are generalizing to. For strong generalization, we either have a completely unseen object type or a completely unseen skill. For example, we have never seen a drawer in the wild being pushed, which we are generalizing to in SGA, and we haven't seen the skills like reorientation and turning, which we are generalizing to in SGB. For the experiments, we consider two different scenarios. The first is a tabletop setup where we introduce different objects on a tabletop for the arm to manipulate. And then in the, in the wild evaluations, we drag a Franka Panda arm across diverse kitchen and office scenes and ask it to manipulate objects that are already present in those scenes. Now let's look at some results for human plan predictions followed by robot translations. 
Given an initial image and a goal image, we first learn to output a plan of how a human would manipulate the object, and then we translate that into robot actions for execution in the real world. We can observe this across diverse scenes and goal images that correspond to manipulating different objects with different skills. We can see that the predicted human plans are plausible and the translated robot actions actually correspond to manipulating the object as per the desired goal. Looking at the quantitative results, we can see that Hoffman achieves much higher success rates compared to a goal condition behavior cloning baseline that is trained on only the robot data, indicating that the predicting and translating of human plans are helpful for generalization. Compared to approaches like MP and VRB that use human videos for predicting latent skills and visual affordances, Hoffman achieves much higher success rates indicating the benefits of predicting a temporal human plan. Finally, compared to a recent work, H2R, that does open loop predictions of hand trajectories, the closed loop control of Hopman is helpful in achieving significant gains across generalization categories. Now let's look at some of the robot evaluation videos of Hopman in action. We can see different skills being reliably executed in the standard generalization category. Even in the strong generalization category where we have completely unseen object types and completely unseen skills, Hopman is able to execute plausible manipulations across diverse scenarios both in the tabletop setting and in the wild. Finally, we show a glimpse of the in the wild capabilities of Hopman, where a single goal condition policy is able to tackle these diverse tasks across different generalization scenarios. In summary, we developed the framework for learning generalizable robot manipulation by combining internet scale human videos of everyday interactions with limited in-domain robot data. We established different levels of generalization for evaluation and demonstrated results for over 100 tasks involving 16 skills. For more videos, please refer to the website.